It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Ultimate Science Bowl game. Yes, today, the elementary school championship. And this is our 35th year of playing Science Bowl in the Prince George's County Public Schools. We started back in December with 32 elementary schools and we are down to the final two, Hyattsville Elementary and Whitehall Elementary. Whitehall was a champ back in 2018. Hyattsville has never won a championship. So today we are going to have a terrific match Elite students, the best of the best, and we invite you to play along with us and see if you can keep up with these wonderful young people here. Remember, they are only in elementary school. You will be amazed. If you're new to our program, typically we do this in the studio here in Landover at the Bonnie Johns Media Center. That's where I am. All of our students, because of the pandemic, are safely at home. We're coming to you via Zoom here today. And our students still get 50 points just for showing up and looking as good as they do. There are no buzzers. Each team will get 18 questions in our six different categories. Not identical questions, but similar in difficulty. And the team that is ahead at the end will be our champion this year. And we'll, they will wear gold medals, testifying to the fact. And our runners-up will get silver medals. All right. Let's start out and tell you about the categories that we use here on the Science Bowl. These are they. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical, questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's Science Potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions, everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. All right, it is now time to start the game. We go alphabetically, Hyattsville before Whitehall. So Hyattsville, let's meet that team. Let's say hello to Arlo. Hey Arlo, he's our captain. Arlo, wave to everybody out there who's watching. <laughs> and he's wearing his Hyattsville t-shirt as all members of the team are. Say hello to Ellie. Hey Ellie. And Ellie had a brother on the show, and Arlo has had two siblings on our show in our 35-year history. And Samuel is an only child, no brothers or sisters on the show, but he's got a couple good-looking cats. Samuel waved to everybody. All right. Hi, Phil. So let's get started in the game here. If you guys are ready, our first category, the green things questions. Let's do green things for five points. Here we go. Good luck. Beneath Greenland's miles-thick ice, fossils of million-year-old plants have been found, especially lichens and these non-flowering plants that are known to grow on the north side of trees. Moss? Moss is correct, yes. If you're lost in the woods and you don't have a compass, look for that moss on the north side and you know where north is. Nice answer, good start. Here we go to 15 points in green things. I'm sure your mother has told you this. Always wash fruits and vegetables before eating them, especially ones most often covered in pesticide, which include strawberries, kale, and this other leafy green that is the source of Popeye the sailor's strength and often gets stuck in your teeth. Spinach. Yeah, Spinach is spinach. right. You got it. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Samuel. Popeye and his big muscles, thanks to spinach. 25 points, green things. I'm sure you've participated in STEM fairs, once known as science fairs. You have a project. If your STEM fair project is determining whether tap water or distilled water leads to better plant growth, you have to make sure that all the possible differences between the plants, like their size, their species, the amount of light they get, the kind of soil they're in, all those differences are eliminated and that the only kind of difference is kind of water. 
Those other differences are known by what the initialed word. Variables. Uh, you knew that one. I heard it in triplicate. Variables they are. Excellent, guys. Let's go to the zoo. <laughs> A comedian recently joked that it's about time these birds learned the words to the songs as they hover in midair in front of flowers and drink sweet nectar. Hummingbirds? Yeah, they've been humming all this time. Come on, birds. You must know the words by now. Hummingbirds is right. 15 points. Cicadas don't go through complete metamorphosis. Since after their eggs hatch, instead of a larval stage, they have this N-initialed stage where the young insects look like miniature adults and just keep growing. Nymphs. Say it again. Nymphs. nymphs it is. Thank you, Samuel. Yes. And those nymphs are translucent. When they come out, you know, the light partially goes through. They're, they look like ghosts climbing up the trees. 25 points is a visual question, Hyattsville. Have a look at this animal. I like this animal. The animal with the biggest ears on earth relative to its size is the jerboa. J-E-R-B-O-A, a rodent that lives in Central Asian deserts and is known as Asia's Mickey Mouse. Those big ears help the jerboa to do what two things that help it survive? Talk among yourselves. I'm looking for two things that those big ears can do for that rodent. The thing Let's that see. bats do. The thing that bats do. Yeah, echolocation. That might be one. And maybe just good predators. hearing. What? Hearing predators. Hearing for predators. Oh, wait. I think I heard somewhere that there is a type of animal that lets out, that like helps control their body heat through its ears. But that's probably not it. Just thinking. Um, Listen for predators and maybe the ears like give it shade or something. Boy, a lot of good ideas there. And Maybe Arlo, unfortunately, you, it comes down to you. You're the captain. You've heard a lot of ideas. Can you give me the two that your team is going to go with? Echolocation and hearing predators. Hearing predators is correct. Hearing predators and also listening for prey. The other one was one you did mention, and that is temperature regulation. It helps to radiate heat back into the atmosphere. Nice try, but I can't give you the points on that one. Good try. Let's go to the body system. Your last three questions before we take our first break. For five points in body systems, your gluteus maximus muscles are partly to blame if you inadvertently dial your phone with your what? Butt dial it. When you butt dial it. And we're all guilty of that. Absolutely right. I didn't mean to do it. For 15 points in body systems. This year's Regeneron Science Talent Search winners. The Regeneron Science Talent Search is the top STEM fair in the country. One of the winners was a student who invented some of these S-initialed threads used to sew up surgical patients that will turn color if an infection occurs in the wound. Stitches. Stitches is right, or sutures we would have accepted. What a great thing, because you never know if, if there are bacteria under there. Uh, but when that color change occurs, that was a wonderful invention. She rightly deserved her prize. 25 points in body systems. These bones, depending on their location in your spine, can be described as cervical, thoracic, lumbar or sacral, sacral, depending on their position. The spinal bone? Can again? See the question again? I certainly can. These bones, depending on their location in your spine, can be described as cervical or thoracic or lumbar or sacral, depending on their position. Your Are they different? Cage? Vertebrae? Vertebrae. Vertebrae is correct. Absolutely right. The cervical at the top and the sacral and the coccyx, your tailbone down at the bottom. So you have 160 points. You are in great position. I'll be back with you in just a few moments here and talk to you about yourselves and your schools and then I'll give you your next nine questions. Keep up your great work, Hyattsville.
It is now time to meet that wonderful team from Whitehall Elementary School. As I was telling you at the top of the show, they are former champs back in 2018. Buying for the chance, trying to get a second championship today here. Let's meet the team. Let's say hello first to Brad. Brad is our captain. Wave to everybody, Brad. Nice to have you here today. Whitehall Elementary, you can see he's got a matching shirt there. He is proud of his school. And also Jake. Hey, Jake. He said, I'm not going to be left behind. Also a proud member of the Whitehall Elementary School team. And hey, Hayden. Hayden, are you going to go for three? You got a shirt on. Great job. 2021 Science Bowl. A uh, historic year. First time ever we have done this on Zoom, a virtual bowl. All right, guys, if you're ready, let's get started with your green things questions. First one is worth five points. Here we go. You guys all set? Yeah, all right, here we go. Allergists say take a shower before bed. Close the windows. And don't sleep with your pet if it's been outside because all these steps will reduce your exposure to what plant produced allergens. Pollen? Pollen. Pollen grains is correct. Yes, five points. For 15 points, to start seeds growing inside your house, you want to get a jump on the gardeners next door. You can soak them in water, you can scratch them or chill them, sometimes they need that, and then plant them in a pot made of rolled up newspaper. A pot made of rolled up newspaper. The pot can then be put right into the ground. Since newspaper is this B initial kind of material that will decompose on its own. Biodegradable? Biodegradable is correct. Nicely done. Yes. So the pot will disappear and the plant's roots will simply move out. And it's a great way to, uh, to start your garden for 25 points in green things. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1915 went to Richard Willstatter for his work on plant pigments, especially chlorophyll, where he found at its center an atom of the chemical element Mg, which is now included in most plant fertilizers. Name that chemical with the symbol capital M small g. Uh, do you think it's Mag magnesium? Magnesium. Yeah, yes. It is magnesium. Excellent. Excellent work. All right, guys, let's go to the zoo. If you're in a French restaurant, you can go amphibian and order frog's legs. Or you can go gastropod and order one of these shelled animals that SpongeBob famously kept as a pet. Snail. Snail. Yeah, that's right. Little Gary. 15 points is a visual. Let's have a look. A relative of coral and jellyfish is this A-initialed stinging polyp that doesn't hurt Nemo or any other clownfish, whether they're in a movie or in real life. Sea anemone. anemone. Yes, a sea anemone is correct for 25 points in zoo. Of all the animals on Earth, 34% are humans. Just 3% are wild animals while a whopping 60% of the animals on Earth are the cows, the sheep, and the pigs that we eat. Animals often referred to by what L-initialed name? Livestock. Livestock is right. Thank you, Hayden. Let's go to the body system. Some students in the Science Bowl get so nervous, they feel a knot forming in the pit of this organ, or sometimes they feel the flutter of butterflies there. Stomach. Stomach. Stomach is right, yes. For 15 points in body. This A initial science that examines all the structures of the human body, including the bones and organs, is also the title of a long riding, long running TV hospital show known as Gray's What? Anatomy. Gray's Anatomy is right. 25 points, last question for you in the opening round. The syringe that many allergy sufferers carry with them in case they need an emergency injection is known as an EpiPen. The Epi refers to a drug known as epinephrine. It is also known as, by what other name, a kind of hormone. Any ideas, guys? Could you repeat the question? The EpiPens, 
that are oftentimes carried by allergy sufferers in case they need to take them in an emergency situation. EpiPens can they contain a drug called epinephrine, which is also known by what other name, a kind of hormone. Correct answer is adrenaline. Adrenaline was the right answer there. So at the end of the first round, Whitehall, you have 160 points. We have a tie at this point. All right, we'll be back with you guys in a few moments to talk to you about yourselves and your schools and give you your last nine questions. Keep up your good work. All right, it is now time to talk to the team from Hyattsville. And uh, yeah, we're at that point in the game where we have a tie, 160 points each. And if it ends in a tie, we have some sudden death tiebreakers. So we'll keep our eye very closely on what happens in this second round here. Before that, if you've not met these outstanding young people, let's talk to them right now. Arlo, tell us a little bit about yourself. And you told me earlier that you're the third member of your family to be on our show here. Um, Actually, um, I'm the second. Oh, the My sister was on multiple years. I see, I see. So yeah. uh, I'm sure your sister's very proud of you, and thank you for keeping up the family tradition here. Tell me about yourself. What do you do in your spare time? Um, let's see. I like to I go out, like to swing, and play video games, and let's see. I am currently building a Rube Goldberg machine for a school pro pro project. Wow, a Rube Goldberg, yeah, where the, the, the bowling ball hits the diving board yeah. and things. Uh, those are just great. Yeah, love to see them, love to make them. Sounds like, so you're, a real cre sounds like you're a real creative guy, Arlo. Uh, someday, what do you hope to do? I'm not really sure. I mean, just so a lot of much choices. to choose from. I was just thinking. Where life takes me. And then if I have to make a decision, just make it. Yeah. And, and you do know, absolutely. And everybody grows up differently. And you know, that epiphany will hit, hey, that's what I really wanted. It can happen now, it can happen 10 years, 20 years from now, but uh, you're gonna be great at whatever you choose. You're a great player. Nice to have you here, Arlo. Yep. Ellie, let's get Ellie up here. Ellie, nice to have you with us today, and you're such a great team player. I like how you consult with everybody, and you were telling me earlier that uh, also you have a sibling that was on our show, yeah? Yeah, my brother. Your brother, yeah. And what, what did he say? You said he did something famous. Oh, he said, he said that this could be his road to stardom. Road to stardom, well, you know, it can be. I don't know if I told you this earlier, but there is an outstanding physics student at the University of Maryland who got his start on the science bowl. He lost his first year, he won the second year, and he said that's what convinced him he wanted to go into science as a career. So uh, it won't happen for everybody, but we hope everybody feels better about science and has a greater appreciation for science by being on this program. You certainly do. Ellie, tell me about yourself. Do you have any pets at home? Two rabbits. Two rabbits. What are their I names? Ah, so you have a little menagerie going there. Have you thought ever about being a veterinarian? I don't want to be a veterinarian because I feel like that's too much pressure. Like at some point, like if you have to do surgery, like the animal's life is in your hands almost. And I don't like want that pressure. I also don't really have interest in like doctor stuff. I right. more want to be like a person who like goes outside and studies animals and just like kind of hangs out with them, kind of like Jane Goodall. Wow, boy, she would love to hear you say that. She spent all those years in Gombe in Tanzania with those chimpanzees and her studies, and she had no formal training. She just learned on the job. Uh, what a great role model. What a great young lady you are. Thank you, Ellie, for being here. Good luck in the second half here. Let's talk to your other teammate, Samuel. Hey, Samuel. Come on back up and uh, do you have your little kitty with you or not? Um, my cat seems to have hopped down from the window, so no. <laughs> Cats have a mind of their own. They like to go where they want to go, and uh, you know that. I don't yeah. have to tell you. You're a great player. How do you know so much about science, Samuel? Because you do. Uh, I talk to a lot of people, and one of my main talking points is like, 
random facts you've learned so I get like everything random put into my long term memory. Mm. And I feel like that is a big part in how much I know. Well, you're doing all the right things, and yet yeah, you have a, a nice curiosity about life. And I hope you keep that because that means you'll be a lifelong learner. Speaking about lifelong, um, Arlo's still trying to figure out what he wants to do. Are you similar, or do you have some definite ideas? Uh, I feel like I don't really need to know right now, but I'm kind of looking into jobs, but not like long-term jobs. Just I like jobs your I attitude. I, I like your too. attitude. Uh, you shouldn't be so concerned about that now. Enjoy being a kid. Enjoy all these experiences here, and uh, something will happen naturally. I guarantee it. Keep up your good work here. Nice to have you here, Samuel. If you are ready, here are your second nine questions. Hi, it's Phil. Let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. Here we go. If heavy snow on a mountainside yields to gravity, one of these dangerous events can occur, endangering skiers in particular. Hey. Snow slide. Give me, give, me, give me another name, please. Avalanche. One. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ellie. Avalanche Ellie. it is. Good backup there. 15 points. Something called fulgurite. F-U-L-G-U-R-I-T-E. Fulgurite is a kind of rock created when this form of electricity strikes the earth. Um, do you think it's lightning? Because I feel like that's the most natural type of electricity. Correct. Yeah, Correct. It is lightning. It is lightning. Thank you, Captain. For 25 points. Always fun. Physical for 25 points. While the planet Mars has polar caps, like ours, some of the other water from the huge oceans that once existed on Mars has partly evaporated, but most of it, scientists think, is locked up in the top layer, the top geological layer of the planet that has what same name as the top geological layer here on Earth. Crust. Crust. Good. 25. Let's go. Pope Bree, five points. Like this question, listen carefully to all the clues. Scientists have succeeded in growing a tiny lacrimal gland, L-A-C-R-I-M-A-L, -A, -A, a tiny lacrimal gland in a Petri dish that they even got to shed these, even with no one chopping onions nearby. Tears. Tears is correct, yes. A little gland in a dish that actually produced tears. Wow, what a great thing to be a part of. What a great experiment. For 15 points is a visual question, Popery. Let's have a look at this. In Puerto Rico, a beautiful island, there are three seemingly magical lakes that will glow blue at night if the tiny dinoflagellates that live in the water are disturbed and produce their own light, which you're seeing here. Are these three bodies of water known as, it's a multiple choice, incandescent bays, fluorescent bays, or bioluminescent bays? Bioluminescent, because the creatures inside make their own light. You got that right. They are, bi they are bio bays, bioluminescent bays. 25 points in potpourri. Ski lodges often ask airline pilots to seed, Ellie, seed, clouds, with crystals of a chemical that resembles ice particles because it leads the clouds to produce snow. The chemical that they use has the formula AG, capital AG, and I. What two chemical elements are they? AG and I. AG is silver, and I have no idea what I is. Um. Samuel, any idea? Ellie? Um, it's not iodine. It isn't. Definitely not iron. Iron is like SU. No, it's FE, but yeah. All right, Arlo, it's, it's up to iron. you. you uh, AG is silver, and what is your answer for I? Um. 
It is iodine. It is iodine, which Samuel was iodine. musing about there. Okay, wish he had gone with that. Let's go to Dateline for five points. This is very interesting. Scientists have calculated the declining numbers of these creatures by examining how many fewer of them are ending up splattered on car windshields. Flies? More generally, please. Insects? Insects, yes. Used to be you'd go driving in the country and there'd be grasshoppers and all kinds of things smashed all over your windshield. We don't see that so much anymore. That is evidence. That's the canary in the coal mine that says the number of insects on Earth is starting to plummet. Let's go to 15 points in Dateline. Because of intermarriage, the royal families of Europe were at one time afflicted with what H initialed hereditary bleeding disease that is passed along on the chromosomes. Um. H initialed. Uh, Ellie, do you have, um, let's see. H initial disease. H. I know that there's a two. Wait, is it that disease that's like that happened in like Japan a bunch of time ago and was a huge deal? Because nobody knew how it was how it was like passed through. I forget what it's called. Uh, Samuel's musing up there. Uh, actually, uh, in the royal family in Russia. There was a young czar, the son of the czar, Alexis, and he had hemophilia. Hemophilia is the H initial disease. That's where someone gets cut. Didn't know that. There is no stopping of the bleeding. Yeah, look that up. It's a fascinating story. Here's the last question for you in the game 25 points in Dateline. The NASA engineers who worked on the recent Mars rover that carried a small drone like helicopter aboard use the nicknames Percy and Ginny, which were short for what real names? I'll take one or the other. Percy and Ginny, the rover and the helicopter. Give the, me either of their they, real they, names. Are they, the Weasleys? are they the Weasleys in Harry Potter? Or is not? I know that um, Perseus is a name. Percy, eh, could be it. Wait, was one of them named um, Ingenuity? Yes, yes. Ingenuity was Ginny, and Perseverance was Percy. So you got the point. You got the 25. Nicely done. All right, 255. That's a great score. Let's see if it will be enough to take home the county championship. Give yourselves a nice pat on the back, guys. You did a super job there. Congratulations. All right, it is now time to talk to that great team from Whitehall, and let's start out with their... Captain, uh, and that is Brad. Hey, Brad, tell me about those shirts. Whose idea was it to give you those shirts? Um, actually, um, Mr. Boca, he's one of the helpers. Um, he, um, he's actually the one who created these shirts, the Science Bowl Elementary School 2020 to 2021. Wonderful. We thank Mr. Booker and Ms. Chelcott, uh, your other helper, your other coach, for doing such a great job. And Dr. Farmer, the principal of your school, who I know is a great fan of science, well, she used to be the coach. She used to be coming here. So she is a part of our Science Bowl family. What would you like to do someday, Brad? You, you see science in your future. Um, one day I would like to be a, um, a software engineer because, mm -hmm. um, I would, because I want to one day design a program that will be able to detect cancer in its early stages. Wow, what a wonderful, noble ambition, because cancer still ravages people. We're so concerned about COVID right now, but, you know, cancer takes far more lives, too many lives in this country. And, of course, software engineering, that's part of it. That's a STEM subject. So all of the STEM subjects are going to serve you well. You're a great student, Brad. Nice to have you here today. Let's talk to your teammates there. Let's talk to Hayden. Hey, Hayden, you seem to know an awful lot about science. Uh, tell, me, tell me how you know so much at such a young age. For asking, I I like to read. I'm still studying and reading a lot, and but recently, I have been watching some interesting documentaries and discussing them with my family. Wow, uh, I like that. You know, talking to other people about what you've seen and opening yourself up to all those different opportunities. Uh, 
you've set yourself up for a lifetime of learning. As, as your parents have probably told you, you know, homework doesn't end when you leave school. Life is all about homework and staying on top of things, and you're going to be doing that. What do you want to do someday, Hayden? Have you given it much thought yet? Um, I don't exactly know what I want to do when I'm older, but I do know that I'm excited about the middle school I got into and the new ways that it'll challenge my knowledge and the opportunities it may create. What middle school you will you be attending? College Park Academy. Very nice. Well, they're lucky to get you because you're going to be a great student there as you've been at Whitehall. Good luck in the second half here. Let's talk to your last teammate. That is Jake. Hey, Jake. Jake, you've been Hi. so imp how you doing? You, you've been so impressive on this program. You just you have a determination about you, and uh, I know you're a great student. Um, tell me how you developed this discipline. Have you always been such a great student? Well. Um, in school, I like I usually pay attention to all this stuff, but um, in my free time, I'm just a goofy kid who does, uh, who is extremely creative and all that. But my discipline comes from paying attention to fun. So I'm not too serious, but I'm not too goofy either. <laughs> I love that description. You know, we're all kind of goofy at times, and that's that makes us human. And uh. I know you're keeping the goofiness under wraps because I know you're, you're intent on winning here. You know you're serious, but uh, uh, you're just a great kid. And thanks for being part of this. Uh, we're lucky to have you here. All right, let's get back into the game. All right, you've got 160 points. Let's see if you can add to that. Here we go. And we start out with the questions. And let's get physical for five points. And our first question is a visual question. Whitehall, have a look at this. Not the most attractive of pictures. Guano, G-U-A-N-O, another name for the poop of seabirds. That you can see all over the rocks there. That is bird poop. That guano has long been mined and used by farmers as fertilizer. Since it is rich in a chemical with the symbol capital P, capital O, 4. P-O-4. This is a multiple choice. P-O-4 is an important plant nutrient. Is it potassium phosphate? or peroxide? What do you think? Again, um, I think chemical elements, capital P, capital O, and then a four, for four atoms of O. Um, um, so guys, I'm kind of thinking... I was thinking phosphate. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with phosphate because P is phosphorus and O is oxygen, PO4 is phosphate. Nice start, guys. Let's go to 15 points and let's get physical. First produced in the lab in 1950. This chemical element, number 98 on the periodic table, is named for the United States state with the largest population. Add an IUM to the name and you get it. Its symbol is capital C, small f. Okay, do you think it's California? Oh, California. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. You got it. Thank you, Brad. Californium it is. For 25 points, in the late 1800s, there was an electricity war in America, pitting Thomas Edison against this other man, an engineer. Edison championed direct current, where the, as this T-initialed electrical engineer said and proved that alternating current was better and cheaper as a way to deliver electricity. For 25 points, name this T initial engineer whose name today is attached to all electric vehicles. Nikola Tesla. You got it. Nikola Tesla. A much ignored man who is getting his due now. Thank you, guys. Pope Brie for five points. Because the names of so many of the letters in this alphabet sound alike Zeta, Theta, Eta. The World Meteorological Association has decided to no longer use it to name hurricanes. What do you think? Maybe Greek? I think it's Greek. Um, I'm kind of unsure. I agree with Hayden. It is Greek. Greek alphabet, yes, because when they ran out of other names in very busy hurricane seasons, they went to Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Nice, five points. For 15 points, if you could put a sphygmomanometer on a giraffe, 
you'd find that this bodily measurement would be twice as high as that of a human being. Important for an animal with a head atop a very long neck. Blood pressure? Yeah, you knew that one cold, didn't you? Blood pressure is right. 25 points. In the Jurassic World movie, a young boy, about your age, runs into the Dinosaur Visitor Center's display of this important genetic molecule and recites from memory all four of its nucleotide building blocks. He goes, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. Name that molecule for 25 points. DNA, what do you guys think? Um, what's the molecule, so? Um, molecules, let's think. So there's, can you repeat the question? Yes, the young boy in the Jurassic World movie runs into the Dinosaur Visitor Center and there is a display on this important genetic molecule. And he runs up and he can recite from memory all four of its nucleotide building blocks. He goes, there's adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking DNA. Too. DNA. It is DNA, absolutely right, 25 points. Let's go to Dateline. Five points, Godzilla who fought King Kong recently in the movies, was said to have been created when the atomic bomb was dropped on Japan in World War II, releasing this deadly property. Do you think radiation? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You're, uh, you got it. Radiation, radioactivity, correct. 15 points in Dateline. The year after Albert Einstein won his Nobel Prize in Physics for his theory of relativity, Niels Bohr won his for discovering the arrangement of the protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up the structure that is the basis of all molecules. Atoms? That's correct, yes. He is the one who came up with the atomic model. Last question of the game. You've got them all right in this, this second half. Health agencies are warning people who have been raising chickens at home during the pandemic, ten, no, pandemic, not to snuggle with the friendly birds, and please don't kiss your chickens, which some people have been doing, because they can infect you with this S-initialed bacterium. Salmonella? Salmonella? It is salmonella. Excellent work. You got them all. All right, guys, you end the game with 295 points. That is a fantastic score. Will it be enough to take home the championship? Super, super work. Well, we expected a close game, and that is what we got. This was a battle of two championship teams. We have medals for all of our players today, gold and silver medals for the winner and the runner-up. What a display of scientific knowledge, and you can just see the amount of work that went into this all because of their efforts and the efforts of their coaches. Look at their coaches out there, kids. You waved everybody. Miss Sunday, one of the coaches at Hyattsville. Mr. Danga, coach there at Hyattsville. We have a coach also from Miss Chilcott from Whitehall and Mr. Booker from Whitehall. We have the principal, Dr. McKee from Hyattsville and the principal at Whitehall who just recently became Dr. Farmer. Congratulations, we have Dr. McKee and Dr. Farmer here. And Cynthia, thank you for all you've done over the years for Science Bowl. All right, I know you're waiting for the results. And our final tally today is Hyattsville 255, Whitehall 295, which means Whitehall, congratulations. You are the Science Bowl champion. You are number one of the 32 schools that started out. And Hyattsville out of 32, you came in a close second. Boy, you've never made it this far before. Yeah, look at Arlo. He's, he's got this going on out there. We thank you all for a wonderful year, and we hope that next year we're back here in the studio. And coaches, we will be sending those medals out. We have gold and silver medals. And on the back, it will say that the students won this championship in this historic year, and hopefully they will wear them around. And when you get back to school, wear them around your neck so everybody at school can see what you've done because you've done exactly what all of us adults hope you do and that you're all gonna make us proud as you move on. Hello students, I'm Dr. Monica Goldson, Chief Executive Officer for Prince George's County Public Schools. 
What an exciting finale to this year's Science Bowl season, and what a close game it was. Hyattsville Elementary School, you did an amazing job, and I'm proud of you for making history as the first team from your school to ever advance to the final game. And to this year's champs, Whitehall Elementary School, congratulations on winning your school's second championship. Each of you are winners and history makers and have so much to be proud of. Keep up the excellent work, students and coaches, and again, congratulations. Have a wonderful summer, and thank you all for everything, and let's have a nice round of applause for everybody, for everybody.